All right, let's look at another example. What I want to do is to be able to go through the mesh hierarchy and find those, those terms that have a specific word in them. And I want to find all of the subcategorizations of those terms. Let me do it. Let me do an example. It's find mesh uh, dot mops. And if I type in the keyword abdomen, uh, what you see here is um, we did find that A01.047 <coughs> has abdomen in it. These are the subcategories of abdomen. Abdominal cavity is part of the abdomen. Peritoneum is part of the abdomen. All of these are subcategories of abdomen. All right. See, they all have 047, A01, 047 in them. Uh, we also found uh, abdomen down here um, in abdomen acute, whatever that means. Another abdomen acute down here. And these would uh, probably be part of a larger category indicating some particular condition. Okay, let's try another one. Sorry, I'm coughing here. Um, find mumps, and I'm going to type in the word cells. Okay, upper or lowercase doesn't matter because it converts everything to lowercase. And you see there's a lot of them. And you can see several of them here. I may scroll back while it's... Um, so this mesh heading here, A15, 145, 229, is blood cells. Blood platelets are blood cells. Erythrocytes are blood cells. Uh, erythrocyte membrane is part of erythrocytes. Um, erythrocytes abnormal, 330. Um, Canthocytes. I'm going to get into pronunciation problems here. These are all of these are subcategories of blood cells. They all have cells in common. They are subcategories of something with the word uh, cells. And you can see it goes quite deep down here. So how do I do that? Well, here's the program. It's very short. Again, it uses Q uh, query and Q length. Okay, first of all, we uh, read in a keyword. There's the uh, read statement with a prompt. Read in key, we convert it to lowercase. We um, skip to a new line, so we'll have some spacing. We set x equal to up arrow mesh, and we say x is equal to query on x, uh, which gives us the first reference in the mesh global array. Um, if x comes back as empty, we halt, which we don't have any. Um, we're not in a loop yet, so theoretically there could be nothing in the database. Okay, forever. Notice the two blanks after the four. Um, we set y equal to the lowercase of at sign x. x is a global array reference. At sign x is the contents of the global array reference. So if, um, if the reference is mesh A01047, at x would be abdomen. It's the contents. Okay, so why is the contents of the global array reference? Now what I'm doing here is I'm using the find function to determine whether or not key, which is the thing I read in as my, as my query, whether key is in the text of the string y. Now in the case of abdomen, it's just a single word. But in some of those text descriptions, there's several words. All right. So the question is, is key part of what's in y? Um, and the not sign in front here. So if if it's not true, if key is in y, we'll get a we'll get a value, a numeric value. If it's not in y, we're going to get a zero. Okay, so not zero is true. So in other words, if we don't find it, we will go down here and we will set x equal to dollar sign query on x. In other words, we're getting the next global array reference on mesh. Uh, otherwise, notice the two blanks after else. And we just pause there. We'll come back to that. Um, actually, you know, if we don't do the else, we'll drop down to this line right down here. All right. So, if if key is not part of the text of the mesh reference that we got, we will get the next mesh reference, and we will skip down here, and we'll ask the question: Is it empty? And if it's empty, we'll halt. If it's not empty, we go back up to the do here, and the do will ask the question. Uh, we'll extract the text from x, which was the x we got in this line. And so the thing runs on until eventually we run out of them. All right, otherwise, if the key was part of y, we enter this block and we ask how many indices does x have? x is the global array reference. How many separate indices? One, two, three, four, something like that. Uh, abdomen would have two. Those two two indices. Uh, we write out x, which is the uh, global array 
reference, we write out the contents of it. Okay, so in other words, we found in the global array reference X uh, the keyword we were looking for, abdomen or cells, so we write it out. Then we say, well, do you have descendants? Do you have descendants uh, which are you know, subordinate to this category? And therefore, the term cells or abdomen really applies to you too. Well, how do I know if they've got descendants? Well, they've got descendants if the number of indices of the next or successive global array references are greater than the number of indices in the current global array reference. So I got i. i is the number of indices in the thing I just found. All right. And I go down there. I set x, and there's and this is forever, uh, set x equal to query of x. I'm going to get the next one. Uh, if it's empty, I halt. Notice the two blanks after the halt because it also has no arguments. I quit if dollar sign length of x is not greater than i. What does that mean? It means if the number of indices in x is less than or equal to i. Not greater than means less than or equal. There is no less than or equal in mumps, uh, so you're stuck with not greater than or not less than. So if the number of indices in the next or successive ones, as it turns out, um, reference in the global array that we got from query uh, is equal to or less than the uh, number of indices that was in the one where we found the key, <coughs> we quit. What does the quit apply to? It applies to this 4. So if we quit the 4, we move on to here, to the if, and we check to see if x is empty. Uh, we probably already have checked to see if it's empty, but we'll check it again. All right, so if if this quit does not execute, it means that the value um, of q length is, great, is greater than i. What does that mean? It means it has more indices than uh, x, the x up here from which I got the i uh, had. It means it's deeper. There are more indices. It's deeper. It's a subcategory. Well, it's a subcategory. Go ahead and print it. Uh, skip to column 5, print out the reference. Uh, x, uh, skip space, and print out the content. Works like a charm. And then we go back and do it again. Get the next x. And so long as the number of indices in the successive references that we're getting back from query are greater than the number in i, where i was the one where we actually found the key term, um, we'll keep printing them. And we can go to quite a, lot, a great deal of depth. Eventually, we're going to get to the situation where we either run out of indices or um, we're going to find a reference that comes back whose number of indices is equal to or less than i. What does equal to or less than mean? It means it's the next one. It's the next one there. It's not associated with the one I was uh, came from. So we move on in the database. And when we move on, we again we check to see if halt. If we've got an empty string, if we do, we get a halt. Otherwise, we go back up, um, and we z lower stuff because we don't we don't z lower here. Probably should have, um, but um, we didn't actually when we printed it out. We just printed out at x. We don't need to do any z lowering here because we're not doing the find on it. Find is based on key. Key has been z lowered. We need to z lower, uh, bring to lower case. I, if I didn't make that clear. Um, and they turn the terms in there so they'll compare. So the comparisons are all done in lower case. So that is uh, what works. It's again another example of queue length and query being used. Uh, they're handy functions. They're kind of messy, but they're handy. So again, if I uh, run find and I set type cells, and you can see it's finding them all over the place. And the, the big one here, I guess, was we found blood cells. And all of these are deeper. Blood cells is 815, 145, 229. You see all of these have that same prefix, 229, until we get to the next one. Well, we, we eventually ran out, and we went to something that was not this prefix, basically. Um, and eventually we found another one at A15, 378, 6, uh, 316 um, for bone marrow cells. And bone marrow cells has, you can see, the subcategories of it, so forth. So if we want to if we want to search for a particular term and find all of the all of the related terms, the subcategories, this would do it.